Yo guys, what's happening? It's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about long-term development of maximum strength. So for a lot of us watching this, we all want to get stronger in our 1RM. And with that comes some great complexities on how we do that. So let's get to it. Through my extensive research and reading, we have found so many different things that are so interesting, even from nearly 100 years ago. And what we have found is that maximum strength has a lot of dependable variables, right? So we have, right, our ligaments, tendons, and bones, are they strong enough? We have, are our muscle tissue strong enough or reactive enough in order for us to hit these bigger weights? Is our central nervous system firing all these muscles in the right way, in the right area, and at the right intensity at the right time? A lot of these factors are huge in order to get super strong, but they need to be trained in a certain way in order for us to not only achieve our best possible results, but also to make sure that those results last a long time and give us a long lasting career. So for most of us, if our training system is not allotting at least a 10 or 15 year career, we're probably leaving hundreds of pounds on the table as far as our true potential and ability. I find that these are huge issues with some of the training models that I've seen in recent history on training like Smoloff and a lot of these other supposed translated training things from like Boris Chico and things of that nature. I think all of those training cycles are interesting and fun to read and even sometimes fun to experiment with. But what I find is that those types of training cycles tend to lead people down a very short career. Most people that I know that have done these types of programs, they only stick to them from anywhere from 8 months to 26 months and then they're completely trashed. Tons of injuries, tons of overuse issues. Now, if you have hundreds if not thousands of people per weight class, it's a great way to dig out and find the most genetic freaks, similar to how the Bulgarians did things back in the 60s and 70s. But let's get to some things on how do we create maximum strength, allow it to last, and develop a solid base. The first thing is, is that we need to build a base of hypertrophy. So if you read a lot of the foreign texts and a lot of the recent research in the last 100 years, many of them have found that strength training becomes a much better scenario for maximum gains if a hypertrophy base with proper technique is developed before the focus is maximal strength. There are a lot of papers out that talk about being in the 70 and 80 percentile range for multiple sets and reps and how it's just as advantageous as going super heavy all the time and it's just as heavy as going or just as good as doing other types of programs. The point is, is which is the best program? Well, the answer is we don't really know. But what I would say is how we measure the best program for maximal strength is not only how strong it gets us, but how many mileages we accumulate once we get up to that point. And that's where training becomes super, super difficult. So the point is, point one is base your training off of repetition and hypertrophy before mixing into maximal strength. Now that doesn't necessarily mean to start off like a bodybuilder, but it would mean to have some bodybuilding characteristics. Now what's funny is a lot of the old foreign text is talking a lot about how repetitions of somewhere between four and six repetitions in each set for hypertrophy gains is actually more uh, beneficial than doing things in 10 and 12. If your goal is maximal strength, okay? Now if your goal is maximum hypertrophy, you probably need to be in the 10 to 12, possibly the 15 to 20 rep range. But the point is, if we're talking maximum strength, we need to develop a base of hypertrophy. This is a lot of the reasons why in our online coaching and manuals, you will see a ton of five rep maxes. And it's because we have found that the neurological and physiological changes of around five rep maxes tend to lead not only down the avenue of more muscle mass, but down the avenue of maximal strength. The next thing you need to remember is when you're trying to develop maximal strength is don't just think about things that are heavy all the time. You need to make sure that you're training sub-maximal weights with maximum intent. And this is where the dynamic effort method comes into play. So if you're not training the dynamic effort method, what you're not telling your body to do is neurologically fire all your motor units and develop all of those in a good coordinated fashion under high velocity. 
So there's two ways that we can try to get the central nervous system to fire 100%. We can fire 100% by either going insanely heavy or with maximum intent with a submaximal lift. What I find is a lot of people discredit the dynamic effort method and don't use it for maximum strength because they can't teach intent. So a lot of times with online coaching, we have a hell of a time teaching people the dynamic effort method because they don't understand or the body is trying to be efficient with its particular energy systems. Meaning, if I say bench 405 and I only have 185 pounds on the bar, my body's gonna lift it like it's 185, whereas you should be lifting it like it's 400 pounds. Well, how do you get the body to lift 185 with 400 pounds of intent? That's neurological excitement, and we're gonna talk about a video on that to help you guys understand what level of arousal you need to be at, not only in training, but in competition. The next thing that you need to understand with long-term development and maximal strength is that people that hit monster weights tend to have the best form. So that means that as you're developing this maximal strength and this base of hypertrophy, your technique needs to be of the utmost importance, even more important than work capacity, more important than maximum strength, everything. Technical proficiency is crucial. Now, how do we get to technical proficiency with maxing out? Well, the answer is technical proficiency usually comes from not having weaknesses. So if you have strong quadricep to hamstring ratios, core to lower back ratios, scapular muscles to chest and anterior delt muscle, and those ratios are really good, then the chances are your technique is probably gonna be really good. Most of the times we see technical error with people that have drastic weaknesses in one muscle group or another for different reasons. And that's why it's so important to have a professional coach constantly looking at your videos and dialing them in so that way you can find out what your weaknesses are, stay on top of them all the time, and not waste time or energy in the gym. I think the, hit, the hardest part with developing maximal strength is there's so many ways that we can waste our time in the gym. And to me, spending a little bit of extra money to make sure that I'm not wasting any time in my prime is probably the most important thing that you can do. So go on to winningstrength.com and we can help you gain your maximal strength goals, not only safer, but way beyond where you ever thought possible. Talk to you guys later.